murder. And I asked Pete about it. And he said that he came home and found his wife with another man in bed when he came home from the service and shot and both. That's all I know. He gave me his wrong last name. Did he say when that was, or how many years ago? I know he told me that he had been out um, about three years, and he did 20-something for one, 20-something for another, so he was in jail about 40-something years. Mm -hmm. He only been out like three years, and that's when we all got to know him. How did, he, how did Bob meet him? How did Bob come to know From him? From a girl named Terry. <coughs> Just don't know her last name, don't want to, don't ever want to see her. She came to our house at one time when I was living there and she stole our food. That's the type of person she was. So you had lived there at 19M Street at one point? Yes, I did. For a year, I was in Bob's from me. And you stayed in touch? Always. Oh, yeah. I gave him a ride all the time. We were very close friends. Very close friends. Now, Peter has said, told police that he was at Hampton Beach about five months. You said he's been with Bob about two months. Do you know, had he been on the beach living somewhere else? Yeah, hey, I'm going to say he that. He was on Seabrook Beach. He was, he was on Seabrook Beach. With Terry, right? Terry. Okay. All right. And then he needed a place to stay. And, and Terry, Terry introduced him to and Bob, Bob. And Bob, being as good-hearted as he is, He'd take took anybody in and do anything. He'd give his last whatever he had for anybody. He was that, that type of man. Unbelievable. He was a great person. And, and not able to even hurt anyone. So for this to happen to him, it's just uncalled for. Well, I mean, a sledgehammer, that's where we're all kind of going. What? You know? Who even has this? You know what? We don't even know where the sledgehammer came from. So do you think this was premeditated? That he thought about it maybe before? Think, as you think about it, we actually wonder if he had it he was planning on doing this because after so many times of him telling us that he was going to kill Bob and we just blew it off but now when you think about it we, I go to my boyfriend's house and I find his roommate murdered on the couch and the first person you pin on is him he never he told me it. he wanted to kill him he told he told quite a bit about you know us neighbors that he was he was going to kill him and the day that morning he told one of the neighbors I'm going to kill him do you think what? Bob felt threatened by Peter? No. No, not at all. Not at all. Not at all. Bob never saw this coming. No. Do you think Bob would have ever sought police help if he did feel threatened by Peter? Would he have called and said I something? I, yeah, Bob was tough. He was stubborn. Mm -hmm. He was. I don't think, I don't he, think would've. he would've. I don't think he ever suspected it. And why would Peter make those kind of comments that he was going to kill him? What would I mean, he, what? Well, he always told me that he had been in jail in the past for murder. And he didn't care. He says, I, you think I care going back? I've been there before for murder. You think I care? And our face is like, yeah, whatever. You're drinking, you know. But then it comes down to it that you know, we find him. And, and he, he doesn't eat. He, he has no remorse. He was smirking yesterday on camera for other, you know, because he said another charge. He was playing cards with the He was playing oh. cards with the people at the West Court. Like nothing happened. He, there's so many unanswered questions that we have. How did he do it? Like, not how did he do it, but if you did it with a sledgehammer, there's so many neighbors and so many people that are close. Nobody saw anything. Mm -hmm. It's kind of weird to me, you know. And then he goes to the Westport Police Cards, acts like, act like next nothing, to the police station, in front of the police station, acts like nothing happened. And when we saw his mugshot, he was so beat up. What do you think happened? What do you? Apparently, does that make sense to you? Apparently, he got into a fight at the bar. We're wondering if oh, we but Bob told that he fell down the flight of stairs. Right, but Bob was at the bar with him and they had a drink. And I don't know if someone that jumped him, he took it out on Bob, or who took it out on him. So they had been at a bar together that I afternoon? Was, yeah. That's what we heard. That's what I've heard. I don't know if it's true. We don't know. We don't know. There's so much stuff that we're hearing. And of course we're going to but hear. But there's only a matter of hours from when I dropped him off until he was murdered. I mean, at 3 o'clock, his best friend was at his house with my, my boyfriend. He sat there at 5.30, so when the best friend comes down back at 5.30, knocking on the door, so from between 3 and 5, because we saw the Hobbit, you know, 3, and his best friend saw him, and then 5.30, nobody's answering the door, and the door's locked. So, are you hearing anything from police that it all helps you come to peace with this? Or Melissa's been wonderful to me. It's 
all I can say. She's called me every day. Who's department. Melissa? Yes. Oh, okay. Melissa, she's been wonderful to me. She works for the police department. Yep. Good. She's been great. I really don't have too much help. Thank you. Guys. Thank you Thank very you. much.